we're talking about the fourth fascial fitness principle, proprioceptive refinement, and preventing sensorial dampening. Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help to deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Jennifer Gianni, and today we're going to be talking about the fourth fascial fitness principle, proprioceptive refinement, and how to prevent sensorial dampening. A lot of the information that I'm using today comes from an article written by Robert Schlelp and Devo Mueller. For more information, please look at the link below. So Robert and Devo say in the article, a perceptual refinement of shear, gliding, and tensioning motions in the superficial fascial membranes should be emphasized. And the way that we should keep talking to these superficial fascial membranes through the tensioning, the shearing, and gliding is, should be in various different ways. Different rates of movement, different ranges of movement, and putting our bodies into different positions so that it's talking to gravity in a different way. Where it's, it's very unusual to them. And so that will start to talk to those hidden blind spots in their connective tissue about moving, gliding, shearing, um, creating more awareness. So just two sample exercises that I thought were pretty fun we're going to look at today. And the first one is going to be a hanging exercise. So we're going to be brought back to those days where we were hanging from trees. And this is so good for our shoulder girdle and for our rib cage to get this kind of tractioning. All right. So we're going to use the Cadillac and kind of using it as a pull-up bar first and just hanging from it. And just this simple hanging from the, the Cadillac is going to talk to um, creating a lift in our shoulder girdle, our ribs, and our diaphragm. All right, so having the client just hang here, and then, you know, the toes can be on the floor, um, and then asking them to draw their shoulder blades down and the crown of their head up right, and then dropping back down. So first, just getting that really small glide of the scapula up and down, having them find that connection and starting to floss those fascial layers under the shoulder blade and around the rib cage. And so after you establish that simple glide of the shoulder blade up and down, then you can start to add more advanced movements that might be really unfamiliar to them, especially hanging from their hands. So this next one is going to be just the message of a side bend. It doesn't have to be really big. So they're going to hang again, right? And from here they can find a little bit of connection into their mid-back. And you can use the feet on the side of the Cadillac to kind of press into to find this little bit of side to side. Whew. And that also, it's not only flossing around the shoulder blade or into, underneath the shoulder blade, but I'm feeling this in my psoas and my lumbar spine, really getting that tractioning of my pelvis and my legs down to get that opening. So from here, you can also add the flex and an extension. And you can use the, the quadriceps on the table to help you leverage this. So again, hanging, right, connecting into the mid-back and doing a little arch and a little curl. And arch and a little curl. And again, I'm trying to hang my pelvis and my sacrum as heavy as I can. Another sequence of exercises or exploratory movements that I like to do is with the, the bungees. And this will really kick up the game for your clients who are really trying to prevent sensorial dampening. So really give them a variety of things, really testing how they organize themselves spatially. And so we all realize that we have this organic tensegrity system in our body. 
and that we're really in charge of having to find all this length tension in our body, no matter what position in space we're in. Um, but sometimes that's really hard for people to embody that and to really get what that means until you put them in a very unfamiliar environment, right, um, with a sense of support. So now the bungees are going to be an extension of my tensegrity system. And so I'm giving myself or my client the job of as they move into these different positions in space, that they're in charge of keeping the tension in both of the bungees, no matter what position they're in. So you can, of course, just do some of your traditional arm spring exercises that we do in Pilates, but you can also make this a little bit more creative and go into some more organic movements, really allowing the rotation of the whole body and coming into some really interesting shapes and challenging the balance, right? But really asking the client to keep the tension. It's really hard to do. And when they get used to it, they can move in a lot of different fun ways, right? The arms don't always have to be straight, right? They can go into a one leg balance, which is interesting, right? On both sides. And they're in charge, again, of pulling themselves apart, of really finding that length tension through their whole system. So this is a really fun way to mix it up and to create that glide, that shearing, that tensioning in our connective tissue and having it be a full body experience. In my last episode, I answered a question by Jacqueline about what are some, some, some solutions, some other modifications or variations, different exercises that I can do with my clients who have been told by their healthcare professionals not to go into flexion. Here's an, another idea, and we're using the overball. So this is, I love this, this is brilliant. And what's gonna happen here is you're gonna go from extension into a flat neutral spine but you're gonna be working all of those corset muscles. So all of your, the, the fascia in your corset is gonna be activated and pulled apart. So you can see that we have this very deflated overball. I also have a blanket to bring my pelvis up a little bit so my lumbar spine feels nice. And then I'll have my client go onto their side and then roll onto their back and make sure that this deflated overball is right at the mid-back and the head is over. If this feels like too much of a drop for the shoulders and the head, you can put a little folded towel behind the head. From here, I'm gonna lace my fingers and I'm gonna put the hands behind my head. Elbows are up to the ceiling. And I wanna feel like my shoulder blades are lifting my elbows, and at the same time, with my head down, I'm tractioning the back of my skull to the wall behind me. Now I'm cueing the heaviness of my pelvis, my feet reaching into the floor, sitting bones wide. And then with my eyes on the ceiling, on an exhale, I'm just gonna lighten the back of my head hands from the floor, keeping my eyes to the ceiling and just coming into this flat back neutral spine with my sitting bones open. And then on the exhale, slowly, slowly decelerating myself down, feeling that fascial pull in my deep abdominals until I slowly set my head down. Again, my pelvis stays in the same position. My lumbar spine keeps its easy home, neutral position. So I'm not flexing my lumbar spine here. I take a deep inhale, my eyes stay at the ceiling, and on the exhale, I just float the back of my head, 
hands off the mat, right? And I'm tractioning the back of my head, my shoulders are drawing down, my sitting bones are wide, and then on the exhale, deepening my belly to slowly, slowly set the head down. Good. And then you can roll to the side to come up. So I'm gonna get rid of the blanket, and I'm gonna show you another sequence or idea for this, this same clientele. So deflated over ball, they're gonna pick up their pelvis, and the over ball is gonna become like a little pillow for the sacrum back of the pelvis. And then it's also creating this very unstable environment under their pelvis, so they have to kind of figure out where center is, right? So a lot of people will wanna drop off to one side or the other, but they have to keep the steadiness in the back of their sacrum and their pelvis. So just trying to stay even on this wobbly surface and breathing and creating that pre-activation is gonna be enough. But they could also start to explore in a very small way just from their pelvis that little bit of a posterior rock back where they're starting to, they're just getting into that very beginning of flexion in their lumbar spine, trying to release any extra tension that they don't need around their legs or their pelvis, and then from their pelvis, moving back into their home position. And they'll pick up that feeling of their deep abdominal. So heavy, heavy pelvis, keep falling into the ball as you start to rock the pelvis back. Tiny, tiny movement, letting go of any excess gripping that you don't need. And then staying heavy on the ball, going back to that beginning home position. As they come back to the home position, they're picking up that deep abdominal fascial line right below their belly button. That's it for today. If you have a comment or question for an upcoming episode, please comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or on the forum on our site. See you next time and never stop learning. You know what, and I burned you and you owe me two massages now. Burn!